house. It's sure good to see all of you that are with us this morning. Man, what a beautiful day out there. And it's just good to be in God's house this morning. Listen, we want to begin by reading a scripture. If you'd want to stand with me, you that can and would like to. Psalms 148. Psalms 148, verse 13. I like this. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is excellent. Amen? Amen. His glory is above the earth and heaven. And he's absolutely worthy of our praise today uh, in, our, in our worship and our singing. All that we do today ought to bring him glory. Hey, this service, it's all about him. Amen? Amen. Pray with me. Father, we come to you right now in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you for the beautiful day that you've blessed us with. Lord, this good crowd this morning, uh, our church family, those that may be visiting. Lord, just bless this worship that it be pleasing to you. Lord, we want uh, it to be acceptable to you today. So, Lord, we just thank you now, again, for your saving grace and your sustaining grace. Lord, meet every need in the house, and we just pray your blessing upon us right now. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You're already standing, so let's sing a song. What do you got, James? We're going to sing 656, This World Is Not My Home. Be seated. 
Hey, it's good to see Brother Herb back there in the back too. If, if you hear if you if you hear any snoring back there, somebody go back and give him a little shake, you know. But uh, sure, good to see Herb and Dars uh, back in service with us today, also. Okay. Hey, just a couple announcements. Um, men and ladies, prayer 5:45 this evening, six o'clock worship. I'll be preaching. Uh, no, I was going to say I'll be preaching. Brother Mike Ward will be here tonight. Once a year, Brother Mike comes. Uh, with the Gideon's ministry, that is absolutely a God-ordained ministry uh, as they spread Bibles around the world, really. Uh, but Brother, uh, Brother Mike will be with us tonight. That'll be a good, good service. Uh, general board meeting right after the service tonight. And then Wednesday worship, 7 o'clock. I'll be preaching this Wednesday night at 7. And then Saturday is Blaise's uh, bridal shower. That's a uh, 11 o'clock in the fellowship hall. Getting closer and closer, isn't it? It is. Uh, but anyway, I, that's kind of what's going on this week. Next Sunday, 5 o'clock in the fellowship hall, special meeting. You know, last Labor Day, that was our kind of our first Labor Day festival, and it was a tremendous success. We were estimating we had between four and 500 people here that day, and uh, we're planning for another uh, real outreach for the community um, Ronnie and Lars bringing the animals up again, camel rides and uh, petting zoo and all of that. Uh, a lot of a lot of free food to eat and uh, a real good way for us to reach out to the community uh, with the gospel as we give out some information to everyone that comes. Anyway, that meeting will be next Sunday at 5, so we need a lot of you that's willing to work. We had a great team that put all that together. Many of you worked in it last year. Uh, we need your help again. Come to the meeting. Also, we're going to be doing something, raising funds for the outdoor ministry. Um, we've got a, a men's outdoor ministry. We all, we'd like all of you fellows here at that also uh, for next uh, Sunday evening at 5. And then we always have the big wild game dinner in February, and that's always something to look forward to. So anyway, that's what's going on. Uh, we're glad you've joined us today. It's good to be in the house of the Lord, isn't it? Amen. It really, really is. And we're, we're glad you're here. Praise the Lord. Brother James. We're going to sing 264 next, but before we do, did we have any birthdays this week are coming up? No birthdays again. How about anniversaries? Jim? 67. Anybody else besides Danny and Kendra? Somebody in class asked Kendra how'd she do it for 40 years. So if you need some wisdom or maybe some instructions, see her after the services. So, all right, let's sing happy anniversary to Jim and Yvonne and Danny and Kendra. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary to you. May the Lord bless and keep you. Happy anniversary to you. All right, 264, kneel at the cross.
song <laughs> oh good
He's with us all the time, isn't he? Through good and bad. that's on the shore sees every sparrow that falls he counts the mountains and the trees he's in control of everything of all creatures great and small and he knows my name every step that I take every tear that I cry Everything that I do He knows my name When I'm overwhelmed by the pain Can't see the light of day I know I'll be just fine Cause he knows my name I don't know what tomorrow will Tell you what's in store I don't know a lot of things I don't have all the answers To the questions of life But I know in whom I have believed And he knows my name Every step that I take Every move that I make Every tear that I cry He knows my name When I'm overwhelmed by the pain Can't see the light of day I know I'll be just fine Cause He knows my name He knew who I was When He carried my cross he knew that I would fail him, but he took the loss. He knows my name, every step that I take, every move that I make, every tear that I cry. He knows my name when I'm overwhelmed by the pain. Can't see the light of day I know I'll be just fine Cause he knows my name Every step that I take Every move that I make Every tear that I cry He knows my name When I'm overwhelmed by the pain can't see the light of day I know I'll be just fine Cause He knows my name Every step that I take Every move that I make Every tear that I cry I always wanted to sing. 
Did I do that? That's number two on there, Matt. Don't you? I always wanted to sing in a quartet, but never was good enough. So I'm going to sing in a quartet this morning, and they don't have nothing to say about it. So I'm going to try this. Okay. <laughs>
remember where you heard it first, right? <laughs> oh, appreciate that, Dave. Oh, that was good. Enjoyed doing that. Good to be in the Lord. Boy, I'm having a good time at church today. I tell you, I, I really, really am. Uh, turn with me in your Bibles, the book of John. You know, we've been doing some preaching through the uh, Sermon on the Mount, and I think we're going to kind of switch that to some of our Wednesday evenings. But this morning, the Lord, here's where the Lord led us. The book of John, chapter 5, verse 33 through 35. You know, we did see in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus compared us to salt. Uh, hey, disciples, we're supposed to be the salt of the earth, right? And I tell you what, when you, lose your, when you lose your saltiness, we're not worth a whole lot, it said. And then he said, we're the light of the world. And you know, lights are supposed to shine. We ought to shine for Jesus. Uh, but we're going to look this morning at the fire of God. I believe with God's presence, with God's anointing, with the fire of God upon us, we can still do something for God even in these last days. I believe that this morning with all my heart. Okay, You that can and would like to, uh, stand with me as we read the scripture, the book of John, chapter 5, and verse 33. This is Jesus speaking. He's talking about John the Baptist. You sent unto John, and he bare witness unto the truth. But I received not the testimony from man, but these things I say that you might be saved. I'm glad that's still a Bible word, aren't you? Saved. He was a burning and shining light, and you were willing for a season to rejoice in his light. Pray with me. Father, we're just still thanking you for the blessings of this service. And Lord, it's still our prayer that every song, everything we've done, this message will bring you glory this morning. Lord, we pray that the Holy Spirit would do a work of grace in this very service. Maybe there's someone here that's never accepted Christ or someone that's, Lord, walking a distance from you. And we pray, Lord, would you deal with their hearts today? We thank you for all this again. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. <clears throat> you know what I like? I love good preaching. And uh, I love revival times. We have good preachers in, and I enjoy that. I like being where there is good preaching. I like listening to uh, finding some good preaching. Uh, I've got some uh, good websites. I pull up some good uh, fundamental preaching. I like that. <clears throat> Something else I love. I love seeing people saved. I love seeing people come to know Christ as their Savior. I love seeing the church grow. I love seeing new families. I see new families today. I love that kind of thing. Because God's, you know what, God's on the throne and Jesus is alive and well, isn't he? That, that is the truth this morning. Uh, and I think we ought to still all be excited about the work of God. Regardless how old you get or how old you may be or how old you live to be, I think we ought to just stay excited about God's work until, until the heart quits and we breathe the last breath. We ought to be loving the Lord Jesus. So we're to be the salt of the earth. I know Herb's still awake. I heard an amen back there. We're to be the light of the world. We ought to have the fire of God in our soul Amen. this morning. We see that. Jesus, talking about John the Baptist, said he was a burning and a shining light. And boy, if we could have just heard one of John's real messages. Man, they was with fire. They absolutely was with fire. And where there's fire, there's conviction. And there was conviction even back then when he preached his great messages. You know, John the Baptist First thing I want to say about John, we're going to kind of look at John a little bit this morning. John the Baptist, he was a man sent from God. Oh, listen, that's important. He was a man sent from God. Uh, John 1, 6, there was a man sent from God whose name was John. And so we know God was in it. We know God, he was ordained. He was God called. The fire of God was in his soul because God put it there. <clears throat> and you know what? God... Uh, who cannot make a mistake, had a specific work for John. And he did exactly what God had for him to do. He was that forerunner, wasn't he? The Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, that would take away the sins of the world. Oh, he even said that he wasn't worthy to baptize him, and yet it was the will of God, wasn't it, as John baptized him 
uh, in the Jordan River uh, that day. I simply mean this. God had a specific person for him. You know what I think? God's got a, a specific purpose for you. God's got a plan for every one of us. That, that is the truth. Uh, I mean, uh, our, our whole lives, I believe, are ordained by God. Uh, you know, the providence of God and how we see certain things take place. Uh, I, I don't, I don't, it's, it's not an accident uh, that I married uh, my, my wonderful wife. And we've been married all these years. That was God ordained. You know what? When we got married, we wasn't living for the Lord. But God was in it because God saw the end before the beginning. Believe it or not, it was God's will. You guys got married, been married 40 years. I saw the picture. <laughs> right? And I, but I'm just saying, you know, I, here's what I think. God's got a plan for all of us. Uh, I believe we're saved to serve. Amen? We're, we're, not, we're not saved to, or know, to know Christ and just sit back and be an observer. Although some of you with the health you're in, seems like that may be all you can do. I'll tell you what, everybody can pray. Everybody can be a prayer warrior. Everybody can get on the phone and witness or invite somebody to the house of the Lord. But, but I do believe we're all saved to serve in some way. And uh, you can look in our newsletter and you see a real ministry team there that works together. Uh, whether it be children's church or junior church. or, or just, There's so many different areas in which folks serve in the ministries of this church. And that's because we're all saved to serve together. We, we really are. John the Baptist, he was, he was not an educated man. He didn't have a Ph.D. or a D.D. behind his name or anything like that. His credentials went a whole lot higher than that. He had the call of God on his life. He absolutely did. A, a, a man with the call of God, <clears throat> you know what, does not have to be timid or soft in proclaiming the word of God. Uh, you ever, ever wonder why, why some preachers lift up their voices as they preach the word of God? Uh, listen, I believe God's in that too. God's, uh, Isaiah 58 verse 1, Hey, cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet. And show my people their transgressions in the house of Jacob their sins. Well, I don't have the, uh, the, the volume that I once did as a preacher all, all these years. Uh, but I'll still preach till it quits. All right? I, I just believe that, that God wants us to proclaim his message with a, 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 a sort of boldness. I believe the fire of God in our soul is what would bring about maybe even conviction in somebody's heart sitting in a service just like this. You may be here this morning and you're visiting and you've never accepted Jesus as your Savior. And I just got to ask you one question. Man, what are you waiting on? I mean, God loves you so much. He sent His Son, only Son, Jesus, to die on the cross for your sins. Jesus paid your sin debt in full. Hey, when He said it is finished, your sins was paid for in full. And why would we not want to accept that wonderful gift can't buy it, can't earn it, can't work for it. It's the gift of God's gr amazing grace. And all you have to come up with is a little bit of faith to believe. Faith to trust Him. Faith to believe in Him. Hey, and, and, and some repentance. Change directions. We all know what change in direction is. By the way, when we all got saved, we changed directions, didn't we? <laughs> we did. We our attitude changed. Our direction changed. Our our life goals, everything about us changed. But listen, I just believe that, that John was a man called by God, had the fire of God upon him. John the Baptist had a message from God, and he, you know what? He preached it with power. And because of that, Jesus called him a burning and shining light. Just as he made reflection to the disciples that, you know what? You guys are supposed to be the salt of the earth. You guys are supposed to be the lie of the world. And now Jesus comes along and says, you know what? Here's what I believe about John. He was a bright and shining light. Oh, you know, Zechariah 3, 2, is not this a brand plucked out of the fire? John, John the Baptist was burning for God. He was on fire for God. And if, if there's any lesson to learn out of this, you know what, folks? Don't ever let your fire burn out. 
Don't, don't ever let your fire go out this morning. I read about a 77-year-old man in Indiana. Goes out every day putting gospel tracts in the doors of homes. No matter if it's hot, cold, raining, snowing. Why does he do that? 77, that's time to slow down and take a break. No, he does that because he's got a burning in his soul to win other people to the Lord Jesus Christ. That, that, that's, that, that's really the desire of his heart. I can't hardly hear. Well, you know what? We keep the doctors busy in this church nowadays, don't we? We really, really do. <clears throat> and, and I can't hardly ever talk to Randy without him telling me about somebody he witnessed to in the doctor's office. And, uh, hey, that's all good. That's all good. John the Baptist, he, he, was a, he was a witness for the Lord Jesus Christ. And today, folks, seem like when they get to a certain age or a certain level uh, of their relationship with God, some folks think it's time to get cold, it's time to quit, it's time to slack up, let somebody else carry the load. Hey, as long as you can carry, carry. Right? As long as you can speak, speak. As long as you can testify for Jesus, there's no... There's no time to give up. There's no time to be quitting. John the Baptist was a witness. He bore witness of the light. Who? The, why, the Lord Jesus Christ himself. You're probably still there in John. Go back to the first chapter. In John chapter 1 and verse 7, John chapter 1 and verse 7, the same came for a witness to bear witness of the light. Hey, who is the light, by the way? Not a light. He's the light. Well, it's Jesus. He come to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. And I tell you what, and John was committed to doing just that. In fact, you'll see also another, I'm not going to go to it and turn to it, but there's a scripture there in, in this next couple chapters where, where John basically said, you know what, I've got to decrease so he can increase. John, his ministry became popular, believe it or not. Even though he preached with such a boldness and such a power, and he preached the, the judgment of God. Uh, listen, and there was great times of repentance for them folks. But even in the midst of all that, John became popular, and he finally said, you know what, i got to kind of decrease just so he can increase. And I'll tell you what, that ought to be our mission today, that everything we do, it's all about increasing Him. Hey, the, the, the glory belongs to Him today. Amen? All that we do today is for His glory. You know, it's good to be recognized. It's good to get a thank you. It's good to get a pat on the back. But I tell you what, all recognition needs to go to the Lord Jesus Christ today. He's worthy of all praise today. So John the Baptist, now go over to John 5. We was there. I'm going to read these again. We're going to add verse 32 to it. John chapter 5, verse 32 and 33. There is another that beareth witness of me. This is Jesus speaking. And I know that the witness which he witnesseth of me is true. You sent unto John, and he bare witness unto the truth. Oh, you know what John was doing? He was just pointing people to the light. He was just pointing people to the Lord Jesus Christ. John the Baptist, a burning light. You know, and why did he burn so bright, so to speak? And by the way, he burned bright till he died. He died in the faith. But you know what? I believe he burned bright because the closer he got to the light, the brighter John shined. And I think that happens for you and me too. I believe the closer that we can get to the light, the brighter your life will shine. Hey, I mean, get with Jesus, right? I mean, the closer we can get to the Lord, the, the hotter the fire ought to burn in our hearts today. And that's what we really need. Don't we need a lot of people who just got a fire burning for God? Oh, God, give us a church like that. Give us a people with a desire to serve the Lord like that and to win souls to Christ like that and to be a witness. Hey, and the closer you get to the fire the hotter you'll burn. I, I believe that today. How can, we, how can we get on fire for the Lord today? Well, get just as close to Him as you can. Some of you maybe got a little distance between you and the Lord. 
it, hey, it's time to get back where the fire is. It's time to get back where, where God can stir your soul. I mean, draw close to God. Hey, draw nigh unto God and He'll draw nigh unto you. Isn't that what James said? I understand, draw close to God. And the closer Moses got to God, his face even started shining, didn't he? <laughs> oh, listen. I mean, even his face shone. Draw close to the... How can you get closer to the Lord? Well, I'd, I'd, first of all, I'd want to be in church every time I could be. I'd want to spend some time in the Word of God daily. I'd want to have a good daily prayer time with me and my God. I'd want to read the Scriptures. I'd want to memorize it. I'd want to quote it. I would want to love it. I would want to live by it. And when you get close enough to the Word of God and the, word, and the Lord of the Word, listen to me, that's when your heart begins to burn in you. Isn't that what happened to the disciples on the road to Emmaus? I mean, there they was in the presence of the risen Jesus, and he had kind of in some way hid himself that they didn't recognize him just yet. And finally, they realized, hey, it's Jesus. Hey, it's the risen Lord. It's him. And you know what they said in Luke 24, 32? They said one to another, did not our heart burn within us? <laughs> Praise the Lord. While he talked with us by the way, and while he opened to us the scriptures. Oh, listen to me this morning. The closer you can get to the Lord, I believe your heart will begin to burn within you. You know what will happen? <clears throat> you'll want to get closer. When you get close, you'll want to get closer. Oh, when we get close to the Lord, our heart burns within us. And I believe that's how God draws people into his work, into the ministry of the church. All the various ministries in the church. I tell you what, God, that's how God works. God's power. Hey, there's power in the preaching of the gospel. There absolutely is. So I don't have the voice I used to. I'm getting kind of raspy and hoarse right now. But I want to sound like a trumpet till I can't blow anymore. You know? <clears throat> Sometimes it's hard to get two sermons out on a Sunday. Sometimes it's hard to get one sermon out on a Sunday. But I'll tell you what. This preacher don't want to rust out. I'd rather burn out. You know, folks used to tell me years ago, I was, you know, worked at Chrysler 30 years, plant chaplain the last eight years, and pastor in the church basically full time. And all those hours, and I had a lot of four and five hour nights sleep, folks would say, man, you need to slow down. You're burning the candle on both ends. And by the way, I'm kind of feeling it now. I think I'm, I think I'm a high mileage vehicle. Mom lived to 104, and Grandma lived to 104, and folks somehow think I'm going to go to 104. I got a lot more miles on me than they did. So I don't know. But I think we ought to sound like a trumpet until we can't blow anymore. And I think you ought to serve Jesus to your last breath, to your last heartbeat. Oh, you, so I don't, I don't have the, the fire to do that anymore. Then I got to tell you, you need to get closer to the fire. Hey, what, what do you do when the fire starts going down? Time to throw some live coals on it, isn't it? Time to get some live coals off the altar of God. We can do that in prayer and in the Word of God as, as we seek Him. Oh, listen. So I think all of us, some, some of you may think it's okay to rust out, but I think we ought to, all ought to burn out. Because we're, we're the light, right? Under the world. And you ought to stay salty to your last breath. We ought to shine for Jesus till we can't shine anymore. Oh, understand this. John the Baptist was a voice crying in the wilderness. Not ah, just between you and me, we're kind of living in a wilderness right now. <laughs> Man, uh, in the sea of humanity, things are sure a mess this morning. And we're living in a wilderness in a sense ourselves. And we need to cry out for the Lord. I'll tell you what I really believe today. He had a, John had a voice that was set on fire by God. And you may not be a preacher. You may not be a Sunday school teacher, a deacon, or a youth worker, or a trustee, or you may not sing or be a musician. But if you're saved, 
You ought to have something to say for the Lord today. That's the truth. John 1, 23, he said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord. He had a voice that God set on fire. Back in the book of Isaiah, I'm going to turn there. I don't have a mark, so you might beat me there. And you may not. Isaiah chapter 6. Isaiah chapter 6, verse 5 and 8. Here's Isaiah in the very presence of God. He says, Oh, woe is me, for I am undone. I'm a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. Mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongs from off the altar. And he laid it upon his mouth and said, Lo, this hath touched thy lips. Thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sin purged. I tell you, he got a real coal off of God's altar. And I'll tell you what a voice for God Isaiah became. Every, every, you know what? So every one of us this morning, you know, if we're saved, we've all got that in common. We're in the same family. Amen? Saved with the same blood. We're all related through the blood-bought blood of Jesus. The cross. That's what links us together today. That's what unites us. Although we'd be very different in many ways, it's the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ that brings us together today, Christians as one. Amen? And I'll tell you what, how we need the Lord to touch our hearts, how we need to have a fire in our soul. When God spoke on Mount Sinai, the thunder roared, the, the lightning crashed, and the power of God was there. God's fire, God's power. And John the Baptist, you know what? He preached with the truth and with fire. Because John 5, said, He bear witness unto the truth. By the way, that's our job today. Bear witness unto the truth. Oh, we may have different backgrounds and different ideas and different attitudes about different things. But when it comes to this book, brother, we've got to agree on the Word of God. We've got to agree on these scriptures here this morning. Listen, John, he preached with the truth and with the fire. The whole, by the way, the whole truth. What did he say in John 1, 29? The next day John see the Jesus coming unto him and he said, Behold the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. You know what he's saying? There's no other light. There's no other Savior. There's no other way. Hey, there's no other way to get to heaven today except through the cross of Christ Jesus. Jesus said it over in the book of John 14, I'm the truth, the way, the truth, the life, and no man cometh unto the Father but by me. You can't get to heaven without Jesus. I don't care what religion, what cult, what, what you say you believe in, if you've not come by the way of the cross, you will not make it home. Okay? The way of the cross still leads home. And I've said this before, there's a lot of folks that, you know what, they want to argue this about the Bible and argue that. And some folks just like to argue, I think. But when you go back to the Genesis 1 verse 1, in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. If we can't agree on that verse, we probably won't agree on anything else either. Because God brought it all about. I mean, all oh, there was a big bang and, 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 and this slime crawled into that pond. And, oh, listen. There may very well have been a big bang, but not the way they're teaching it. Hey, when he said, let there light, let there be light, there was light. The word create means he spoke into existence from nothing. That word bara, it means to create, to speak into existence from nothing. When he created the heavens and the earth, he created, he literally spoke it into existence from nothing. Hey, only God can do that. Now, if we can agree on that, we can go further in the Scripture and talk about some things. But if you don't believe God created the heavens and the earth, you're probably not going to agree with anything else I preach either. I'm telling you, Jesus is the way. And He's the only way. Only way to heaven. So what is the truth that John preached? Jesus is the Lamb of God. Why did He call Him the Lamb? 
the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. Why did John call Jesus the Lamb? Because he was going to be the real sacrifice. Hey, blood, the blood of animals and goats and sheep couldn't get it anymore. Listen, it needed to be the blood sacrifice of one who was absolutely perfect in every way. Sinless, holy, perfect, never sinned, never transgressed, never broke a commandment. And he was the lamb, the spotless lamb, that pure lamb that was going to literally lay down his life on the cross and they would take his life, crucify him. And as I said, when he said it is finished, praise God, the sin debt was paid. <laughs> hey, a, a price was paid that we couldn't pay. And he paid it with a debt that he didn't owe. And he gave himself for us. Oh, John, Matthew 24, verse 36. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only, Jesus said. Hey, you know what? We're living in the wilderness today and all kinds of crazy going on. But here's what I believe. You say, preacher, there's so much happening right now. And there is. I mean, every day is a new, wow, I didn't see that coming. I mean, every day. Somebody said, preacher, where's this going? What's going to happen next? I can absolutely, according to the word of God, tell you what's going to happen next on God's timetable. I just can't tell you when. But the what is going to be the church is going to be raptured. All other prophecy has been fulfilled. There, there, there is nothing right now that would hold back the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ for his bride, the church. By the way, he don't even know the day. But one day the father is going to say, Son, it's time to go get your bride. <laughs> hey, it's time to rapture the church. And we that are alive and remain, hey, the dead in Christ shall rise first, and we which are alive and remain will be caught up together to meet the Lord in the air. Hey, there's going to be a trumpet sound. And no matter how much you weigh, man, you are losing gravitation. We're going to meet the Lord in the air. So I say, well, Jesus is coming back, and he's going to rule and reign in Jerusalem, and he will at the end of the seven-year tribulation. But the next time he comes back, he's not going to touch planet Earth. We're going to meet him in the clouds, in the air. Hey, let me, we're talking about it. Might as well go there. Book of Acts, chapter 1. Let me show you the very next event on God's calendar. I just don't know the when, although I do believe it's soon. In the book of John, uh, Acts, excuse me, Acts chapter 1, verses 9 through 11. Here, here's where... Jesus, is the risen Savior, went back to heaven to the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Look at these three verses beginning in verse 9. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up. Who's the he? It's Jesus. Hey, he was taken up, the Bible says. He was taken up in a cloud. A cloud received him out of their sight. Now I want you to keep that picture in your mind. Jesus left when they saw him. He went into the clouds. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, and boy, we would have been looking up too, wouldn't we? Notice, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. Who's the two men? It was angels. And look what the angel said in verse 11. You men of Galilee, why stand you gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. Hey, he left in the clouds. He's coming back in the cloud. Amen. And when the trumpet sounds, we're going to meet him in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Come, wherefore comfort one another, right? Man, I'll tell you what. If I was you, I'd want to get close to the fire today. If I was you, I'd want to put some more, some coals off of God's altar and get fired up for Jesus in these last days. I believe that. Ask God what you can do for him. He'll give you something to do. Hey, be ready to answer God's call in your life. Because God wants to use us all. And I'll close with this, this comment. 
There's some things in life we don't need a call. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to define what that means. I said God's got a, a call on our life. He may call you to do this or that or various things. Every, some people just waiting for a call. There's some things in our life we don't need to wait for the call because he's already given the command. Okay? Hey, listen, we don't need to be waiting for a call to be a soul winner because he's already commanded us to do that. We, we don't need a call. Don't you be waiting around for God to call you to be a faithful Christian. God's already commanded you be a faithful Christian. Stop waiting for the call. He's already made the command. And some folks are just waiting. I'm going to start praying more. <laughs> hey, when, when God calls and speaks, I'll, I'll, I'll pray more when you want me to. No, you listen to me. You don't need to wait for the call to pray. God's already commanded we pray. And I could go right on down the line with a lot of other illustrations. Stop wasting time waiting for the call because some things he's already commanded us to do. And if it's a command, should we do it? If it's a command, it means it's not an option. So we ought to do it. We ought to obey him. Say, I don't feel like it. Then you're too far from the fire. Hey, you're not close enough to the light. Understand this. You can, every one of you, can I say this to you? You can all get just as close to the Lord as you want to. Some folks have just lost their one to. And that would be the crowd that rusts out instead of burns out. I want to hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of the Lord when I make it home. Oh, listen. God's so good, isn't he? So we're salt, we're light, and we ought to have a fire burning. All you got to do is just get close to Him. If you're in the crowd today, maybe you've never been saved. This has kind of been a message to the church. But listen, if you've never accepted Jesus, you need salvation more than you need life itself. And you need the Lord. And He's just a prayer way. He really is. Come to the altar. I'm going to give an invitation in a moment. Someone will meet you here. You don't have to come by yourself. Someone will be glad to pray with you as you accept Christ as your Savior. Maybe you need to rededicate your life. Why would, why would I need to do that, preacher? Maybe because you got too far from the fire. It's time to get back with God. Hey, let's stand. God's so good, let him meet your need today. Father, we come to you in Jesus' name. Lord, thank you for blessing us with such a good service. But just now we pray the Holy Spirit do that work of grace that we've been praying for in somebody's life. Somebody may need to get saved here today. Someone may need to rededicate their life. Somebody just may have a real burden and they just need to get on an altar and pray. Lord, would you meet the needs of this service? Lord, we don't want to get farther away from you. We want to get closer to you. Lord, bless now, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. While we sing, you need prayer, you come on. Remember, the Lamb of God takes away sin. You bow your head for a moment just with the piano playing. Eyes closed, Christians praying. Let me ask you this real quick and we'll dismiss. Maybe you're here today and you've never accepted Jesus. Wouldn't you like to be sure about heaven? Hey, if you die today, are you sure you're going to heaven? 
And some, oh, I think so, preacher. That's not good enough. Oh, I hope so. That's not good enough either. I want to be sure about heaven. You ought to come. Could you slip your hand just so I could pray for you? I'm not coming and embarrass you or anything like that. I just want to pray for you. Anywhere in the building. Father, would you meet the needs of the hour? If there's a need in the house, you meet it, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Last verse. This is for you. Lord bless you this morning. Good being in God's house. Let's sing our song. Because he lives, I can play.